I will be discussing issues concerned with customs regimes, uh, the duty rates applicable. We have what we call suspense regime. And we will touch the critical issue of vehicle importation and the duties involved. So we have several customs regions. We have the export, temporary export, re-export, import, which is the home consumption, Tempor temporary import, warehousing, transit, and free zones. When we say a customs regime, that is what will allow you to make a declaration. It depends on the regime. It is the regime that will give you information about the details you need to make the declaration. So there are several of them, as mentioned. Okay. So for customs worldwide, tax is based on a particular uh, value. For Ghana, Ghana, we use the ad valorium, meaning it is a percentage of a total value of that particular item. For Ghana law, the value of an item is the cost plus insurance and freight. So we call it CIF. The cost could be an FOB that's free on board, X work. That is what you use as the international term, INCO terms. And for customs all over the world, there are six methods of calculating duty based on the, ad, the value. For all declarations, the, the first method is what we call the transaction value. If we don't accept the transaction value, we then look at an identical item, the value of an identical item, meaning that they are produced around the same time, sold in the same commercial quantities, and cleared in Ghana around the same time. So meaning that it is identical. But again, when we, we don't have an identical item, then we'll look for what we call a similar item, meaning they must be commercially interchangeable. You look at the Samsung phone, is it similar to an iPhone? No, they are different. So you look at the phone closer to that particular description. You look at the description and the attributes. That is the third method. There are other methods which are more technical. The deduct deductive method, we will have to re deduce the cost from, you take an invoice in Ghana, then you take out all the duties paid, then now you come to get what the cost price was actually, what the cost price was. Those are more technical, so mostly we rely on the first three methods, which is the transaction method, the identical method, and the uh, similar method. So I, I couldn't touch on all the regions, but what is of interest to me now is that this value in assessing the duty, it is based on the common external tariff for West African countries. All West African countries use this particular tariff. So the rates are in the tariff. A few of them are 0, 5, 10, 20, and 35. Zero for essential, essential items, 5% for industrial items. Then 20, for 20 and 35 are for items that we think would not help our industries here. It was decided at the ECOWAS level. And that thing of importance to me is that personal effects for home consumption. You need to have stayed in foreign for more than a year. When you are clearing those items, they are free of duty. You are not supposed to pay any tax. But it doesn't include building materials and vehicles. <laughs> but remember to make a declaration at the airport that you are waiting for a consignment from abroad. That will allow us to know that you have the intention of clearing those, your cargo. When I spoke about the valuation methods, for risk purposes, we normally have what we call benchmarks, and it is related to world international prices of that particular commodity. But the vice president saw it, found out that 
this was part of the, uh, the high cost of duty in Ghana. So he decided that all our benchmarks must be halved. So meaning you are now going to pay half of what you are, you are paying on benchmark items. It includes oil, uh, uh, food and food items. We've halved all the value. So the benchmarks are halved for uh, these commodities. So now importation of vehicles. That's the most thorny issue, but it's been solved. So for, for Ghana, these are the category of vehicles. We have the ambulance, the yes. We have, we have motor cars. This includes cross-country vehicles and estate vehicles. Then we have vehicles designed for traveling on snow, which is of a different category. And golf cars. These are the vehicles used on the golf parks, the plane park. Then we have another category, which are for carrying more than 10 persons. So those ones are termed commercial. So they have a lower rate of 5% duty. There are tractors that also have a 0% for duty. They, you don't pay any duty on tractors. That is due to customs duty. They will have special purpose vehicles. These are vehicles that are normally, uh, they, they don't do hauling, but they perform another utility different from just the carriage of passengers. So we have uh, vehicles that are equipped with plants and generators. We have these concrete mixer trucks. They form the special purpose vehicles and they also pay 5% duty. Yeah, so these are, these are the determinants of tax liability for vehicle. The age of the vehicle, it determines the the rate of depreciation of the home delivery value or the first purchase price. We have the cylinder capacity of the engine. It also determines the age. The first slide showed different ages for motor vehicles and for trucks. Then the home delivery value of the vehicle. This is the first price the vehicle was sold when it was first manufactured. That, normally that is the manufacturer's suggested retail price. So that is what we take into consideration before assessing the duty liability. So these are the documents you require for vehicle. Certificate of title, salvage certificate if it's an accident vehicle, invoice or pro forma invoice for new vehicles. We also have IDFs for new vehicles. Then your normal bill of lading, that's the shipping document. In trying to come out with the value of the vehicle, there are guidelines which we get from this, we, we, for the used vehicles, we use the NADA. It's the Association of Automobile Dealers. And there's the e-evaluator that helps us in coming out uh, with the value. There's the PC Car Pro for European ve vehicles. It's easier, you just go on the net, we get, we come, uh, we, we, we now see the suggested retail price and that's what we apply. This is the rate of depreciation for the various vehicles. When it is less than half, when it's less than six months, we assume it's a new vehicle, so we, we don't depreciate. If it's between six months and one and a half years, the home delivery value is depreciated by 15%. When it is between two to five years, it's depreciated by 40%. Then more than five years is depreciated by 50%. But now, the president says, discount all these values by 30%. So if previously it, it was nil, we are going to depreciate it by 30%. When you come to, when you come to 15%, we are going to depreciate it by 40%. When you come to 30%, we are going to depreciate it by 60%. And for more than five years, we are going to depreciate it by 80%. So we are about halving the cost of clearance of vehicles. That's the good news. <laughs> then briefly, how do we determine the age of the vehicle? Normally, we take the VIN or the chassis number. We are able to decode it and we can determine the age of the vehicle. For the 
model year vehicles, the tenth character tells you the age. But for manufactured year vehicles, it is the successive productions. So we have a chart where we can determine the age of the vehicle. Yeah, the cubic capacity to can be decoded from the engine code or the chassis number. It's, it's not too difficult. Sometimes the fourth or fifth character will tell you, and you know the tenth character gives you the age. Yeah. There are penalties for bringing in over age vehicles. So these are some of the penalties. For commercial vehicles, more than 20 years, we are going to pay 50% penalty based on the home delivery value. But we have been instructed to reduce the home delivery value by discounting 30%, meaning it's going to pass on to the reduction of, of this also. But for motor vehicles, if it's more than 20 years, you are going to pay 100% on the home delivery value. I think I would like to end the time is still on